Have you ever tried pressing the back button of the browser and noticed how fast the previous page loads? This is the BF cache in action. BF cache stands for backwards forwards cache and this is a mechanism that allows browsers to keep a snapshot of an entirely rendered page in memory. And this means that when navigating backwards or forwards, the web page is rendered almost immediately with barely any load times. Without BF cache, browsers would have to load the entire web page from scratch. It would have to connect to the server again and wait for a response. It would have to re-download all the static assets and would have to re-execute all scripts. Instead, thanks to the BF cache, this transition is made very smooth. The BF cache takes a snapshot of your entire web page and stores it in memory. And at this point, you might ask yourself, what happens to the execution of my JavaScript code? And that's a very good question. The way the BF cache works is that your entire JavaScript heap is stored in memory and the execution of in progress code is paused. This means that code that's scheduled to run with set interval or set timeout, for example, will simply resume when the page is served from the BF cache as if nothing happened. And the same goes for unresolved promises. When working with IndexedDB transactions, things tend to get a little trickier. Whenever a transaction is ongoing and a user navigates away from the page, the browser will not cache the page in the BF cache unless you ensure the connection is closed before the user leaves. Overall, the browser usually has your back and will only cache your web page in the BF cache when it thinks it makes sense. And most major browsers support some form of the BF cache, both on mobile and desktop. Chrome usage data shows that one in 10 navigations on desktop and one in five on mobile are either back or forward. And these numbers are massive. So the BF cache really has a potential to save a considerable amount of time. By now, the benefit should be very clear. Users get a faster and a smoother experience when returning to your website. As a developer, however, we need to take a couple of considerations as the BF cache is often a source of frustration. It's essential to take note of the lifecycle events of a page that gets served from the BF cache. The page load event, for example, will not be fired when the page is loaded from the BF cache. Instead, we have to listen on the page show event and we can check the event.persisted property to see if the page was restored from the BF cache. This property can come in handy to detect if the data is stale. And if it is, we may update it by doing an API call, for example. Some actions, like listening for an unload event, will prevent the page from entering the BF cache. So instead, listen for the page hide event and avoid adding unload event listeners at all times. The unload event dates back from an older time and is currently considered a legacy API. If your web server sends back a cache control no store header, like on Reddit for example, the browser is instructed to skip the BF cache. Now, this behavior will change over time because technically, this header should only be used for HTTP cache and the BF cache is not considered to be HTTP cache. If you're interested to learn more about this, I'll add some details in the description. To guarantee a great user experience, it's important to test the BF cache often. You can easily test the BF cache by opening the Chrome inspector and by navigating to the application tab and clicking on back forward cache. On this page, you can press the big test backward forward cache button and Chrome will automatically navigate away and back to your web page and show whether or not your page entered the cache correctly. If the BF cache fails, you'll get a precise description that tells you what specifically went wrong. If it succeeds, you'll see a green check mark indicating the page was successfully cached. And that concludes our overview for the BF cache. If you're interested to learn more about the BF cache, because there's so much more to talk about, you can refer to the link in the description below. I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you did, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video.